Welcome to another Vengeance Reducer Suite Phalanx video. In this tutorial, we'll be dealing with the Phalanx Loop Page. In the Loop Page, you can see the waveform of the sample that has been loaded into the sample pad. You will also see four small flags. We already mentioned sample start in the video about sample pads. Sample end limits the length of sample playback. The two red flags are responsible for looping, loop start, and loop end. To hear what looping does to the sound, all you have to do is switch it on here. First, let's have a look at what different loop modes are available in Phalanx. Here's the loop mode selector. The options are forward, which we have already heard in action, reverse, ping pong, and X fade. Reverse works just like forward, but loops the sample backwards. The next loop mode in the list is ping pong, which simply alternates between forward and reverse. If you notice clicks between the loop start and end, you should use the fade time control to apply a short volume fade there. Another related option is the Find Zero Crossing button, which you can see here. It ensures that the loop start and loop end flags can only land wherever the signal crosses zero. This option also prevents clicks, which are usually caused by non-zero loop transitions. However, loop transitions in any of the modes can be a source of unwanted glitches, depending on the sample. If you want a really smooth loop, you should switch to the X fade mode. With this option, a section of the sample from just before the loop start is crossfaded with the section just before loop end, resulting in a very smooth loop with no audible clicks or pops at the loop transition point. The colored region you can see to the left of the loop start highlights the region of audio that is crossfaded with the bit just before loop end. The X fade length control lets you adjust its length. You can also change the curvature by adjusting the X fade curve value. One of our favorite loop options is activated by the lock button. Phalanx will preserve the length of the loop so that the loop start and loop end positions will move together. I let the cl 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 as you can see, a lock symbol appears, and you can grab this to shift the loop as a whole. The lock option has more potential than you might think at first. For instance, you can kind of freeze a short section of the sample, then move this window backwards or forwards through time at any speed you like. I let the clock. I let the clock. <laughs> This feature could be compared with a flexible time stretch function and is a great source of stunning unique effects, especially in combination with modulation routing in the mod matrix. Before we move on to the scratcher, we'd like to mention the time ruler, which you can use to set synchronized loop points. Great for BPM precise drum loops. This ruler is updated in real time. It follows any pitch modulation as well as tempo changes in your sequencer. As the mod envelope is dealt with in a separate modulation matrix video, let's skip that for now and move on to a very special feature in Phalanx, the scratcher. 
The scratcher in Phalanx simulates the art of turntable scratching. You won't hear anything when you first switch the scratcher on, but as soon as you play a key, you will see the scratch start position lighting up. By pressing that key, you are sending the message, touch and hold the turntable at the current position. The turntable is now motionless. It is waiting for you to move your virtual hand back and forth. In Phalanx, this movement is simulated using any standard MIDI controller. In its default setting, the scratcher is connected to the pitch bend controller on your keyboard, but can be changed to your preferred MIDI continuous controller. Let's use the pitch bender for now and start scratching with it. Of course, you also have real-time control over the region of the sample you want to scratch. The red min and max flags set the limits for this region, and therefore define the maximum range of the scratch effect. By the way, if you don't have a real keyboard with a built-in pitch bender connected to your computer, you can always use the graphic pitch bend in the MIDI page instead. Possibly the better option, and certainly the right choice if you're not so confident about your pitch bending skills, would be to use an envelope instead. The scratcher lets you use an envelope to simulate a scratch performance. Values above the horizontal line mean scratching forwards, and values below this line mean scratching backwards. Another thing, the scratcher also sounds great if you use it on a pitched sawtooth lead sounds. What you finally do with the scratcher and phalanx is up to you and your imagination. This concludes the phalanx loop tutorial. See you in the next video.